Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. Today is the day we're finally going to do some smithing. It seemed like forever that I've been working on this project. Like I, I got the anvil two episodes ago, and uh, you know we're finally we're finally gonna be doing something with it. And uh, I'm looking forward to showing you how smithing works because it is a trip, uh, much like napping and uh, clay forming in this game. It it's it's its own mini game and it has a, its own set of quirks um and they can you know they're good and bad in a sense they're fun but it's again kind of about the process you know in, in a way i almost look at vintage story kind of like a simulator um much like a like euro truck simulator or other games like that in that the busy work is um, is all the game, but also it's about the process and there there goes our torch by the way I did I did let you know about that one <laughs> um, It's it's about the process. It's about the progress, you know, like it's gonna take time to do some of these things and That's what makes it rewarding. That's what makes you feel good when you see the result of your uh, Of your hard work you see the benefits of that you see the reward Um so I have to do some more exploration and you know, like I said, there was a light bulb moment in the last episode when I realized that boulders are how, how are we going to get our, um, our construction material, our clay stone. It's a hundred percent made a huge difference to the amount of, um, actual time I spent building and digging and I wasn't basically like, um, just relying on the time I spent mining. Uh, for copper to get that claystone. I was also uh, getting claystone without the use of our pickaxe because I realized um, in this play session that you don't actually need to use the pickaxe in order to break uh, boulders. You can use your fist, you can use you, you know a stone, you can use anything. You can just punch it and it breaks up into uh, your claystone blocks. So knowing that is really really good and it's going to save me a lot of time and effort in terms of uh, trying to get our building, our, our, our actual like you know um, place up and running, uh, make it into some kind of home. I do have a vague uh, layout in mind now for what I want to do with it, but it's it's going to be you know it's it's not going to be um, something I know right away. Like uh, I don't yet know what how to organize things in, a, in an optimal way because I don't yet know how I'm going to be doing things. Like, you know, I know I'm going to be smithing he in one section, so I'm going to need a bunch of stuff in, in that section, but I may also need some resources in another section. So here we finally get our charcoal. Um, you know, it's been 24 hours since I planted it and, and set it to, up to, uh, to smolder. So we got to we got to claim that. I I love the sound that <laughs> charcoal makes when you're digging it up. And honestly, fast forwarding it just kind of enhances that sound. <clears throat> Here we are uh throwing some of the charcoal into our forge uh which we're going to need to heat up our ingots, but the, before we can really do that, we're going to need to smelt our uh, copper, which works the same way as it did before. There may be a better or uh, more optimized way of doing this in the future, and I'll have to look into that, figure that out. But for now, I think the best way to do this is you want to heat up uh, a lot of your, like as much of your ingots as you can, as you have charcoal to spare for. Uh, and then you want to have as many ingot molds as possible. Basically, like have them all ready to go. And then when you have your copper in its molten form, you you just like fill them all up. And you should be able to, like it takes a little while for the copper to cool down and you can see I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm really impatient about it right here. I'm trying, I'm waiting, waiting for the copper to cool down, but it takes a long time. Like that stuff is up at, uh, you know, 1200 to, to 13 to 1400 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. Um, and, oh no celsius sorry and uh so it's going to take a long time for that to cool down but you should be able to get away with uh, waiting for it to cool down grabbing all of your ingots and then doing another pour uh i think that um you know you can first of all you can keep the the copper molten without using too much uh charcoal like it might cool down a little bit but you can you can keep it warm um, and then you can you can get away with doing another set of ingots 
But I this was my first time doing this, so I did not have things set up accordingly, and I didn't really have enough ingot molds set up. So that's another problem I set to uh, solving in this episode. So we finally have our ingots, and we finally uh, I made two pickaxes because we're gonna need that. So. Uh, here's what we do. We have to first we set our forge up. We have to you know light it like anything else. Then we throw our our ingots on there, and you're gonna see them begin to glow, and that's when you know the uh, material has softened. So now you can use your hammer to start smacking away at uh, the material, and um, it's of course another abstraction. This is not like how this actually works, but I think it's a good enough abstraction. And it gets the point to point across, and it also makes this uh, a process which takes time. So you basically have to um, move a molten copper ingot like voxel into each zone, and you do that by basically moving it in one of four directions. I opt for down. You can rotate the piece around, so you could basically just keep it uh, in one direction, but or you can swap the direction if you want. But either way, you gotta you gotta just like you know. Get, get them voxels in the um, indicated spots. And then once you have everything filled up, you can uh, chop away the rest of the voxels off and, and basically cut your shape. This is probably, the saw was probably the most complicated shape I could have chose for our first one. Um, and then I chose probably the second most complicated one, which is, you'd, you'd think, you wouldn't think it, but a, just a plate. Just a normal plate doesn't doesn't really um, you know have a strange shape. But here's the problem with the plate, is you're gonna see it in a second. You might even see it right now. You might you know recognize the fact that we don't have enough copper in one ingot to make the plate. So you actually have to heat up another ingot and then throw it on top and then spread those ingots out. Here we we uh, we quench our uh, copper saw. Um, because I, I needed to, I needed time to wait for the ingot to heat up, so I figured I'd go and quench the, the saw, which is really satisfying, by the way. Um, and then uh, we get our we get our ingot on and and continue working on it. And you do get you can see it's a little bit of a grace because like you know the, the copper kind of just lays on top like cloth, but um, you know you still have to do quite a bit of smacking. So why did I make a plate? Well, I knew that I needed a plate for a lantern, um, but I also needed something else for the lantern, which I don't know yet uh, as I'm hammering away at these plates, but I find out soon enough. Um, I needed a candle and I actually threw away, uh, annoyingly enough, I threw away two candles. Uh, at one point I had like a candle and then at another point I had another candle. I was like, I don't want these candles. What are these candles good for? I don't know. And I didn't bother looking into what they were good for. And so I threw them away and they disappeared. So I don't have any candles now. And so I don't have the materials to make a lantern, even though I have this copper plate, which is now taking up inventory space. So that's frustrating that I would do something like that. Like, you know, just look at what it does. But yeah, there's the candle and you need quartz and and stuff. So um, we can make a candle from beeswax, but I'm not nearly at the state to be messing around with an apiary or bees or anything like that. So I figured at a certain point, um, my I, I, my best solution would be to get it, get the candle the same way I got it the first time, which was by panning for it. Um, but I realized very quickly that I probably didn't pan for a candle in normal gravel. Uh, I probably panned uh, the candle out of some ancient dirt. So I had to go and get myself some more ancient dirt, uh, which was a great opportunity to, to actually work on the, uh, the building um, and dig out the dirt that's been like lying there for, what is it now, nine episodes. Um, got, got, of course, 10 to the farm. Uh, do some do some berry picking, but the the main goal of this excursion is to get some more ancient dirt. And uh, like, why? I mean, yeah, the 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 lantern really is that worth it to me. I really did want to have a lantern because I was tired of messing around with torches. Uh, you know, it's it's a kind of a, you know, it's I wouldn't say it's game changing, but having a lantern would be uh, a big deal, and it might give me a bit more confidence to start doing spelunking. Uh, no promises, but you know, it might. And I'm gonna have to do that at some point because so far we've only been dabbling with copper. 
Yeah, you really do have to get down and, and get your hands dirty underground if you want to be dabbling in a bit more uh, like alloys. And, uh, you know, our first ally is pro probably going to be bronze. Um, and we need tin for that. So uh, that's that's something I got to got to do. Oh, and here's our <laughs> our almost uh, daily episode of, of let's avoid the wolves or, or get killed by them. I did spot them, and the nice thing about wolves, as I said, I, I've learned their behavior, is if you hear them, um, they'll do like a little howl before they start prowling, and um, so you you know if you hear that to stay, first of all, away from that sound, and second of all, if you see them, you know they're probably um, on the look for, for some food, so you are next on the dinner menu if you're not careful. So... Uh, I can't remember why I was waiting for something. I was waiting to do something here, so I decided. Well, we got some. We got some uh, flax. I got a bunch of flax grain from a random pot that I, that I broke. Um, so I decided to make an oven. You know, like this is something to do, I suppose. And uh, you know, we were gonna need it eventually. Uh, and I, I figure, well, we have the kern, we have the uh, flax grain. Let's make some bread. So I made the oven. The oven is a lot of clay, by the way. But the nice thing about it is you don't have to uh, kiln it. It's just kind of naturally... I, I don't know what the deal is, but it's just, it's just built. It doesn't need to be fired, which is nice. Um, so, you know, uh, new day. I start uh, panning the, the ancient stuff. I got kind of distracted several times in this episode. Like, you know, there's a lot of things going on. I wanted to get the candle. And I get the flax grain, so I want to do other things. And hey, what's that? Oh, there's a blue gear or something. So, uh, you know, I have to figure out what that is. Temporal gear. Um, not sure what it is, but I think it allows you to set your spawn point, which is kind of nice. Uh, I guess that's good for us because, you know, we do spawn in a random radius. It, I think it would matter more if I had increased the radius for spawning and if we had more of a penalty for death. But uh, still, just the same, it, it's, it's probably pretty helpful. So um, we have our flour, which we've ground from the flax grain, and we have to make dough out of it. So we got to mix water uh, from, a, from the bowl with the um, flax flour. That's kind of a labor-intensive um, process, but it's not too bad. You can see I'm, I'm juggling here. What you have to do is you like fill the bowl with water, put it in the crafting table with the flour, grab the dough and then you know do that again and again and you have to do that for every single um, bit of flour you have and you can see I burned my first set of bread but oh actually I didn't I burned the second loaf but because I was trying to uh, make dough while I was also baking the clay the, the 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 bread and the thing about the dough is it's a base so you can like if you have a table you can roll it and make something like good, like a berry pie or something. I don't know what something, anything. But if you don't do that, then it's just uh, bread. And then when it comes to the oven, you have to fill it with um, firewood, light it, and then wait for the firewood to burn down to sin like to smolders basically. And, and it's heated up the oven. Then you throw your loaves in, and you have to wait. You have to be pretty patient about it because they they will burn, um, but they they don't. You know, they take a bit of time to cook. Uh, I was expecting quite a lot of, um, like, I was expecting bread to sate nicely, but it doesn't really. It, it actually sates quite poorly, which I was surprised by. But um, our character does have different food needs that you can't just subsist on berries and, and meat. Uh, although I think that's probably good enough, but they do also have a... Uh, grain bar that helps them you know I, I don't know how it helps them but it's you know, another thing I'm going to learn so uh, you might be disappointed to find out or I don't know maybe this is like happy irony but I went through all of the ancient dirt and found no candle so that's that's a kind of a blow and we still have this copper plate hanging around um, not doing much we did find another book though, which I haven't actually read yet. I need to take a moment to read that. Uh, I don't include stuff like that because it's like, I, I don't know, it's story. And um, 
it's it's something you you kind of have to get into i don't know if it's entertaining to the people who are watching these kind of videos but maybe it is and you can always let me know in the comments that would help so we finally have our saw and we finally make some planks and i wanted to wanted to end this episode on a high note which was we finally get some creature comforts uh, which is of course uh the theme ish of the episode so i get some stuff like barrels and hey, an actual door, that felt like a milestone to me. And, uh, you know, some really important stuff like tool setups. And hey, a bed. I was really excited about the bed. But I was also very excited about this tool, um, like mold uh, sh shelving unit. I don't even know what to call it, but it, it holds your tool molds for you. So you, you know, just kind of makes it physical in the world. And I love stuff like that because it means that you know there your your environment is starting to um visually show and represent the tasks that you do so you know like smithing is and smelting is something that we do we want to see examples of that we want to see how that is represented in our environment and i really appreciate that the game includes stuff like that um so we make our bed <laughs> literally and we we have a bed, and I'm sorry, but I was very unceremonious about what I did with my old door and my old bed. I'm pretty sure I actually put them in as firewood in our in our camp campsite because I was just so sick of looking at them. And uh, hey, we even also got ourselves a little fence, which makes going into the farm uh, a lot easier. And I love that it actually like fits in with the rest of the fencing unit. The the, the gate kind of like just slaps right in and and it looks nice i appreciate that we got a got a couple candle uh cabbages from our excursion so that was cool but yeah that's pretty much it i spent another hour after this um foraging for berries and and clay stone but i have not included that and uh, i will probably continue not to include um huge sections like that because i don't think it's very entertaining but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.